addressing the plastic pollution crisis. I'm also the producer of the award-winning marine conservation film Blue, which will screen here at the World Ocean Forum 2020. My deepest and most sincere thanks to the World Ocean Forum 2020 for inviting me here to participate in this year's event and to the Ministry of Oceans and Fisheries of Korea, Busan Metropolitan City and KAMI for hosting this extremely important gathering, including government, business and experts, all with a common theme, the sustainable future of our oceans. I would like to begin by sharing a short film with you, I Am Ocean. Breathe, drink, eat because of me. I sustain all life. As the blue heart of this planet, you need me. As humans continue to develop a deeper understanding of how the ocean sustains life on Earth, we are starting to hear the term planet ocean. It seems more befitting for a planet which has over 70% of its surface covered by the ocean. The ocean is the blue beating heart of this planet and despite it being our planet's life support system, we are destroying our oceans at an alarming rate. As a species, we seem to have forgotten that we are co-inhabitants of a shared biosphere with our fellow animal kin that we too are part of a zone of life on Earth that sees the interconnectedness of all living beings and their relationships with each other. It's a system that we are dependent on, yet continue to treat as a commodity, as something that exists solely for our consumption, when in fact it's the very life support system we need in order to survive. Without a healthy ocean, we cannot and will not have a healthy future. There are many impacts that humans are having on our oceans, climate change, overfishing, irreversible species loss, and marine pollution. Today, few can say that they are not aware of the global plastic pollution crisis. There is so much plastic in our lives. The extent of the problem can be overwhelming. Over 8.3 billion tonnes of plastic has been made since its mass production began in the 1950s. And only 9% of this has been recycled the other 91% sits in landfill, floats in our oceans, or has been burned. An estimate of 8 million tonnes of plastic enters the oceans every year, where it is having devastating impacts on marine life, seabirds, and human health. Plastics do not break down. Instead, they break up into smaller and smaller pieces, creating microplastics and nanoplastics. It's these broken up pieces of plastic that parent seabirds foraging at sea collect and unknowingly feed to their young with devastating impacts. I'd like to show you a short film by Dr. Jennifer Lavers, a celebrated researcher who has been studying the impacts of plastic pollution on seabirds. Pieces are all the way up into the rib cage, a bit of a rainbow of colours mixed in with there's a few small squid beaks in here. The squid beaks are what the birds should be feeding their chicks. So this adult was trying to do the right thing. But you can see there's quite a large number of bottle caps. It's a bit of melted plastic. Another bottle cap. Both the creation and the degradation of plastics releases harmful greenhouse gases, contributing to our planet's changing climate. Mass production of plastic started nearly 70 years ago and the production rate is expected to double over the next two decades. Plastics are incredibly useful thanks to their durability, stability and low cost, but plastics create damaging effects on the environment. Plastic is known to release a variety of chemicals during degradation, which is having a devastating impact on organisms and our ecosystem. We know we are facing a plastic crisis in our oceans. 
a crisis that will take a global effort to fix. There are many steps that we need to take in solving the plastic pollution problem. We need to rethink our relationship with plastic and we need to rethink its use in our lives. But what we are missing is a critical, big global step needed to tackle the plastic crisis on a global scale. We need to go back to basics and it's rarely discussed when talking about ocean pollution solutions. One of the biggest gaps in the global effort is the fundamental loss of human connection to our environment. Before we can rethink plastic, we need to rethink the way we relate to our natural world. Humans are not disconnected from nature. We are a part of nature. We co-inhabit planet ocean with an estimated 8.7 million other species. We are all part of an interconnected system of air, water, life and land. All too often we behave like we exist outside these systems and try to control them. In doing so, we disregard their value to us. This human disconnection from nature is unsustainable. Environmental connectedness is where people feel more concerned and desire to act for their environment as they feel a connection to nature and incorporate nature as a part of their identity, identity of self, community, business and country. While many of the world's small island nations and indigenous peoples have retained a strong connection to their environment, much of the developed world has lost its connection, this deep instinctual relationship with their environment. Without this connection, it means we are less prepared to care or have a willingness to take action. Most do not make the connect between what we are destroying and our own human health. Changes at a policy level are essential but until we truly and sincerely value our environment and our connection to it, we will continue to consume and destroy it. We have to care on a significant level if we want to undo what has been done and to plan our sustainable future. In my work, I am often surprised that many do not make the connect that the ocean is the planet's main life support system Many people do not know that without a healthy ocean, we cannot survive. So I believe that partnered with high level of global collaborative change, we also need to return to the basics and inspire people to reconnect to their environment. We need to educate our children about the role of the ocean, their connection to it, and how they can play a part in its protection. Take 3 inspires participation in simple actions that reduce the impacts of plastic pollution and waste in the ocean and broader environment. Our message is simple. Take three pieces of rubbish when you leave the beach, waterway or anywhere and you've made a difference. Although these steps may seem small, it's the simplicity that makes it so successful. Hundreds of thousands of people around the world are taking three for the sea and removing millions of pieces of rubbish from nature in the process. Each of us have a role to play in the choices we make and how they affect our environment. While individual change and local action have a significant role to play in tackling the global plastic pollution crisis, this is a battle that must be fought on multiple fronts. A sustainable future for our oceans and a sustainable future for us is one where we must change our relationship with plastic and rethink its purpose in our everyday lives. Changes at an individual and consumer level are important, as are changes to plastic production by the big multinationals. Local actions can spark global change. In the majority of the world, humans have adopted a linear approach to the way we live. We take, we make, and we dispose. We buy something, we use it, then we dispose of it when something new comes along. Each time we do this, we are using finite natural resources and producing unsustainable amounts of toxic waste. The planet, both land and ocean, is quickly becoming a garbage planet. We have simply run out of room to store all our waste. How can we fix this? We need to take inspiration from nature and model our behavior and production processes on a system that is entirely sustainable. Natural systems are circular, opposed to humans' linear one. 
Circular systems keep all the precious nutrients in place forever. Nature reuses everything and so should we. There should be no such thing as landfill. The same can work for the production of things we use in our daily lives while continuing the expansion of healthy global economies. In the short term, we need to value plastic as a practical and useful resource that sits within a circular economy. We need to assess which plastics have a positive value, that, are, that is, those that can be easily recycled, and we need to rethink and redesign the way we make things, what we make them from, and how they can be reused again and again. This is a circular model. It's achievable and it works. We cannot keep doing what we're doing, putting plastics in landfill, allowing plastics to enter the ocean, burning plastic. The vast majority of plastics are made from finite fossil fuels extracted from the earth. When plastic is burned, it releases dangerous chemicals into the atmosphere. These emissions are known to cause respiratory ailments that stress human immune systems and they're potentially carcinogenic. We need to change the way we rethink about the things we have used. Waste is only waste if you waste it. We have to start using that waste. Most of the products we use can be recycled. It's a matter of technology and innovation, but also supply and demand. If each person considers how much they purchase and can aim to lower their personal consumption, waste will also decrease. Plastic production is expected to double in the next 20 years. By 2050, there will be more plastic in the ocean than fish. Global partnerships on all levels are essential to solving our planet's plastic pollution crisis. Partnerships including plastic manufacturers, product designers, brand owners, retail stores, importers, exporters, and us as consumers. We need solutions along entire supply chains. It's an astronomical problem, but the good news is that plastic pollution is on the global agenda. In rethinking plastics, we need to eliminate the plastics we don't need. We need to innovate to ensure the plastics we do need are reusable, recyclable or compostable. And we need to circulate all plastic items we use to keep them in the economy and out of the environment. We all have a role to play in solving the global plastics crisis. We need governments to have a long-term sustainable vision and create incentives and policies that spark action, innovation and technical changes. The solutions need to come from the top down, global corporations driven by the bottom up, us as consumers. What I feel positive about is that plastic pollution is now part of a global conversation. It's a problem that has solutions which already exist. We just need to make the choice and commit to change. Thank you.